everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, A Better Way to Prep Patients for Surgery. My name is Erica Spicer Mason, and on behalf of Becker's Healthcare, thank you all so much for joining us today. So before we get started with our session, I'm going to walk us through just a few quick housekeeping instructions. First, we'll start today's session with a discussion, and we'll have time at the end for a Q&A session. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the Q&A box that you'll see on your webinar console screen. Today's session is being recorded and will be available after the event. You can use the same link that you used to log into today's webinar to access that recording. Our webinar console also includes a webinar survey and we kindly ask that you take a moment afterwards to complete it as we wrap up our session. And finally, if at any time you don't see your screen moving or if you have trouble with the audio, just try refreshing your browser. And you can also submit any technical questions into that Q&A box as we're here to help. So with that, I'm thrilled to introduce today's wonderful panelists who've joined us. We have with us Dr. Pamela Tan, a board certified plastic surgeon who has a solo private practice serving the Washington DC area. Dr. Tan completed her craniofacial fellowship in Children's National Medical Center after completing a fellowship in plastic surgery at Tulane University and general surgery residency in New York. We also have with us Dr. Alexandra Tilt, a board certified plastic surgeon with private practice in Virginia Beach. Dr. Tilt received her undergraduate degree from Harvard, then completed medical school at the University of Virginia and residency training at Georgetown in Washington, DC. So with that, Dr. Tan and Dr. Tilt, I'd like to thank you and welcome you for being here today. Um, thank you again for spending some time with us. Thank you, thank for, you having for having us. us. Wonderful. Well, to kick us off for today's discussion, Dr. Tan, I wanted to turn to you first. Um, you know, something that we see come up so consistently in our conversation with healthcare leaders today is really that need for efficiency. So I was wondering if you could share with the audience what bottlenecks you're seeing during procedures with current hair drapes on the market. Well, thank you for that question. It is a, a bit of an interesting question because first of all, there really aren't other hair drapes, how like the like the the drape that we've created um, that's out there. And that's partially that's a big reason why we, we came up with this idea to begin with. So as as far as we're aware of, no other drapes that specifically deals with keeping hair out of the surgical field um, while mi minimizing like incorrect position of dragging drapes. Um, so th this has been a dilemma for any surgeon who's had to operate in the hair bearing field, um, trying to keep hair out of the, the wound uh, while, while keeping the drapes in position. So um, again, because there really aren't any other current hair drapes specifically uh, designed the way we've designed it, I, I, I wouldn't say there is uh, uh, there's something to compare it to. However, I will go into a slightly um, uh, some things that have been used. Dr. Tilt will go into it, it in much more detail, but uh, currently uh, the options are you could either shave or clip the hair completely give you a nice big area in which to work with so you don't have to worry about the hair. Another option would be to staple the current drapes that you have available to you directly into the patient's skin or their scalp and that uh, with the intention of keeping hair out of the way. Um, another option that people use is doing something called a turban head drape where you wrap uh, a drape that you have on hand and you use towel clips to keep it in place. Um, kind of looks like, a, well, as I said, like a turban. Um, another option would be sealing whatever current drapes you have with tape that could be with something like a, something like a tegaderm or steri strips. And another option would be tying the hair up into little, little tiny braids with rubber bands, um, all of which, uh, adds time to the procedure and may not give you the, the, the solution that we were hoping for these, these options, and which means like trying to keep the hair out of the way um, and keep blood out of the hair. Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate how you said, you know, these are 
there are a lot of options for these steps and some of these steps are small steps, but they do take time. So I'm sure that for any surgeon who's trying to get procedures done in an efficient way, um, certainly that can create some bottlenecks there. But thanks Dr. Tan for sharing all of that. And Dr. Tilt, I wanted to get your perspective on this as well. Um, I know Dr. Tan already shared with us that there are options like shaving the area, stapling, the turban head drape, but can you tell me about any other current practices to prepare for surgical procedures and also say a little bit more about the time that it really takes to clean up after surgery? Sure. Yeah, Erica, that's a great question. So uh, as everyone knows, surgeons are very particular. So there's a wide variety just because every surgeon has their specific way of doing things. Uh, Dr. Tan gave a great overview of all the different things that people do. But personally, I've seen, you know, a lot of stapling to the scalp, which uh, is fine. You undo the staples at the end, but has the potential of leaving a small wound, potentially a keloid formation later. Um, I've seen the ponytails with rubber bands, combing. Um, but all of these things take, you know, 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes to, to start at the, the beginning of the case. So that's time when the patient's already under anesthesia before you can actually get started with the procedure. Um, and everyone knows time in the operating room can be very expensive. So um, this, the, the drape that we designed is really there to expedite that process so that within maybe a minute or two, you can have all of that done, the hairs out of the way and you can get started with your procedure. Um, and the other thing that it helps with is, is the tail end of the procedure too, just because you know when you have drapes that you're using or towels or something that's not um, impermeable, you end up with a lot of hair, debris, irrigation on the hair. Um, which when you take the drapes down at the end of the case, it, you know, the patient's hair is a total mess and obviously you can't send them to recover like that. So you spend another 10, 15, 20 minutes at the end of the case uh, washing the patient's hair um, and making sure they're presentable to get out of the operating room. And again, that's time in the operating room, which is very expensive. So all of this um, can sort of be solved with the, the drape that we've created. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Tilt. Appreciate you adding on some of those details, especially the cleanup afterwards. I hadn't thought of that, and that's certainly time consuming, although a necessary step, I see. Um, so, Dr. Tan, I wanted to come back to you to hear a little bit more about what inspired you to come up with a better solution to this problem. You know, I know we talked about some of these challenges with time as it comes, as it relates to prepping hair for surgeries. But can you just say a little bit more about the current challenges and what inspired you to come up with the solution that you've devised? Uh, thank you for that question. Um, yes, uh, well, Dr. Tilt and I were operating together on a pediatric case, removing a lesion from this, uh, this child's scalp. And it was an idea that was really born out of necessity. We're, we're there, we're operating together. Um, from the very moment we made that first incision to the final closure, this child's hair just kept getting into the wound, kept being pulled into the wound. And every time we threw a stitch in, we had to pause, we had to stop, we had to pull the hair out, you know, pull that stitch through and begin again. And it was every single stitch, every throw that we did. And then it's with every single tie of the knot going down onto the scalp. Uh, so it, it was a relatively small incision, and yet it took us so much time just to close it. Um, of course, the easy thing would have been to shave a large portion of that hair off, so it wouldn't have been a problem in that sense. But I think you can imagine, without even needing to do a survey, that most people would prefer to keep their hair intact as much as possible. They wouldn't want to get rid of a large chunk of their hair because um, one of the one of the benefits of having an incision within your hairline or with you know within your scalp is that it gets hidden by hair. But then if you remove the hair around the incision, um, you know even even after uh, a great recovery, you you can take a very very long time, months, years, depending on how long you want to wear your hair before it gets covered. So it's it is clearly psychologically distressing for for people to lose hair. And, um, and, so, and so then at that time, we did not opt to either shave or clip that, that child's hair. Uh, and for myself, for any patient, if I, the, the less I can remove the hair, you know, I, I won't do it. Um, but it is very frustrating. Anyone who's ever had a suture wound um, with surrounding hair constantly being pulled into the wound, they, they know how frustrating, how time consuming it is. Uh, if you're lucky enough to have an assistant uh, that, that you have an extra pair of hands that can 
just be completely dedicated to holding hair out of the way, um, that's great. But as you know, hiring an entire human being to 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 do this for you when they could be perhaps doing some other task like um, retracting or closing another incision, it's just not efficient or economical. Um, and also, you know, I would just like to say, of course, as plastic surgeons, aesthetics is always on the forefront of our minds. We naturally have an understanding of that psychological stress of, of not looking uh, quote unquote normal. Uh, and and it, it is very stressful. No matter how temporary losing your hair is, it's still very stressful because even though you can tell anybody, your hair will grow back. Nobody wants to undergo that kind of um, uh, situation if they can. Um, so every time I've ever done a surgery like that before, you know, the straightaway was, was, uh, conceived, I always wanted a solution to it, but I was just very lucky together with Dr. Tilt with this particular case. We just, it just kind of, we literally came up with the idea as we were suturing, uh, over the patient. And it was, it was, um, it was just a very wonderful experience. Well, thanks so much, Dr. Tan. It's really great to hear how this was such a collaborative decision and a collaborative idea that happened on the case. You know, I think those are probably when your most genuine and your most genuine ideas come through and your highest needs come through. So really appreciate you sharing that backstory. Um, and I wanted to comment too on how important that psychological piece seems about patients, you know, if they don't have to sacrifice their hair during the surgery, I think that's such a great point that you make. And it kind of leads me into the next question that I had too, because even though this is a solution for a seemingly small problem, I'm sure the consequences of having a more convenient drape, a more convenient solution, I'm sure those show in other patient outcomes. Um, so Dr. Tilt, I'd love to hear from you on this. Um, why is this type of drape that you both devised, why is it important for surgery outcomes, aside from that psychological piece that we talked about? Um, we'd love to hear more about that and how it's changed your surgery protocol. Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. I think we've been talking a lot about how this helps the patient just in terms of minimizing the hair. Um, but it also helps the surgeon, which we've talked about, and the hospital system, too. So for the surgeon, um, you know, surgeons love efficiency. And as we've touched on, saving that time before and after the case allows you to do, you know, another surgery that day or to have more time to do something else when you're not waiting around in the operating room. So surgeons love that in addition to the benefit of not having to um, pull suture through hair and get hair mixed up with suture and, and all that, um, which, which Dr. Tan mentioned. Um, and then, you know, for the hospital system too, hospitals love uh, saving, saving cost uh, because time equals money in the operating room. So again, saving that time before and after the case, I think uh, hospital systems would do well to, to notice that and use this to improve the efficiency of their operating room, reduce OR times for these type of cases. Um, in addition to that, we haven't really touched on yet is the, um, is the idea of infection, um, just because hair is obviously not sterile and you do your best to wash the hair with betadine or prep before the case, but without the hair drape or the straightaway drape, um, a lot of, you know, when the hair gets in the field, it's not sterile, um, which for cases, you know, small skin lesions, that kind of thing, probably not going to make a big difference. But for those big craniofacial procedures that involve plates or screws or other implantable devices, infection is a major concern, um, especially in patients who have other comorbidities. So we really do believe the straightaway drape can help reduce infection in that way as well. Um, so to answer your question about, you know, what, does this change my surgical protocol? I mean, absolutely. We, as Dr. Tan mentioned, the reason we came up with this was because there was nothing out there. Um, so now that we have this, we will absolutely be using this and encouraging other surgeons to do the same. Oh, thanks, Dr. Tilt. And really appreciate that point that you brought up about infection risk, too. I know that that's something that so many operating facilities are trying to really um, keep under control infection rates. So it seems like a really important point to bring up. Um, so thank you both again. It's been really a treat hearing about the background behind what you, the solution that you've come up with. So now just to show all those on the call a little bit more, some more details, we're going to show you a video of how the stray away hair management drape really works. Um, so I will see, cue up this video here. Introducing the Cardinal Health Strayaway Hair Management Drape, the first and only drape designed to minimize hair in the surgical field. 
which may help reduce patient preparation time for craniofacial procedures. The innovative technology of the Strayaway Drape features three unique anchoring points. Linear edge tape, hair Velcro, and stabilizing clips secure the patient's hair back from the surgical site, which can help minimize time spent pre and post-op, the amount of hair shaved, and risk of infection, while providing a steady hold throughout the procedure. First, comb and part the hair bicornally to expose the surgical site, which will be half to one full inch wide. Shape the strip of hair across from ear to ear and tie back the remaining hair. As you unfold the drape, grip both sides of the linear edge tape and place the drape on the anterior side of the head, starting from the edge of the shaved surgical site. Ensure the clips are inserted enough in the hair to anchor them sufficiently when closing. When the drape is in place, use the zigzag hook to pull the hair back, ensuring as much hair as possible is removed from the surgical site. Use one hand to release the liner to expose the adhesive, and the other hand to hold the drape in place. Place the adhesive on the edge of the surgical site, ensuring that the tape begins covering from the scalp and toward the hair. Once the tape is secured, anchor the drape by closing the two clips, which will further secure the hair and drape in place. Repeat with the second drape on the posterior side and place the procedure drape on top. The Cardinal Health Strayaway Hair Management Drape has you covered when it comes to secure, efficient, and safe craniofacial procedure preparation. For more information, contact your Cardinal Health sales representative. All right. And so I wanted to add a note too that if you'd like to learn more information about the drape or to contact a rep, you can also see the resources section on your webinar console. All right, Dr. Tilt, Dr. Tan, with that, we're going to now get into the Q&A portion of our session today. So to all of our audience members, if you have any questions, something that maybe came up during the video or during our discussion, please be sure to go ahead and submit those questions directly into the Q&A box on your screen and we'll be sure to go ahead and address those. Okay, so we have a few that have come in already. All right, and I'll direct this question to Dr. Tilt to start. Um, can you describe the types of surgeries that are best to use this drape for? Yes, of course. Um, you know, any surgery involving the scalp, even the ears, upper neck, and a lot of face procedures as well. As plastic surgeons, we do a fair amount of facelifts. Um, we really think this, this drape is useful. So in terms of um, a surgical subspecialist, certainly neurosurgeons, um, ENT surgeons, and then all sorts of pediatric craniofacial surgery, craniofacial trauma, um, plastic surgery, of course, uh, dermatology could use this as well, even if it's just a simple little cyst in the scalp, this can help manage the hair for that. Um, and those are, you know, those are procedures where you definitely don't really want to shave a lot of the hair for a small procedure like that. Um, and then even in the emergency room, uh, people come in with lacerations on the scalp. Uh, this can be very effective at, at, at keeping, keeping the hair out of the way so that the um, ER doctors can do their job there as well. Awesome. Thanks, Dr. Tilt. Sounds like there are a lot of scenarios we could apply this to. So this next question from the audience is for Dr. Tan. Uh, so what separates this drape from others and why is it important for the outcomes of surgery? Uh, again, there isn't any other drape like straight away uh, that has a component directly managing the hair in a gentle but secure fashion. Uh, but, but comparing it to the other options that we've discussed earlier, it combines everything into one. So it's really nice. So you don't have to, um, for example, get the staple gun to staple. You don't have to get sterile strips and tiger derms or any kind of tapes and uh, kind of bring things together and hot You don't have to find rubber bands. Everything is it's, it's put into one component where you can you can um, apply it and and have it work the way you would like to. So with straight away, it, it, again, it minimizes the need to shave or clip the hair, a st the stressing stigmata of surgery, um, and you know it, it avoids again it straight away avoids punctures extra puncture sites from from stables. Uh, unfortunately, surgeons may feel pretty cavalier about stapling drapes to the patient's skin or scalp, but 
how can you really justify this? If there's a result of um, a hypertrophic scar or a keloid from a staple just to secure a drape, it's very, it would be, it would be very difficult to justify um, uh, such a wound that's not even related to the surgical site itself. Um, and, you know, turban drapes and sealing drapes, they, they do help seal, but they don't, they don't prevent the dragging of the drape. So imagine if you had to reposition the patient, have them sit up, lay down, go side to side for any, any number of reasons, every, you know, there's so many applications for this drape. We, you know, we couldn't really imagine all the different kind of positionings that uh, some, some surgeons would want to have their patient in. But every time you move that patient, that, that drape will be, will be pulled off the intended site. Uh, but with straight away, you know, the, the hope is we'll keep the, um, is just much more secure with, especially with those clips and the Velcro and the tape, it, it, it'll be a much more secure way while being very gentle on the, um, on the patient's skin um, to keep the drape in place. Um, so I, you know, I, I would say a, a survey really is hardly needed to find out whether a patient or a surgeon would prefer a drape that minimizes um, the hair from being shaven or clipped, um, a drape that improves visibility during surgery, a drape that, min you know, that minimizes puncture wounds from staples and sa while saving operating time and the post-operative need to shampoo and clean the hair. Uh, I think um, uh, you know, this is definitely a type of trick that I and Dr. Tilt has been waiting for and, and now it's here. Yeah, wonderful. Thanks, Dr. Tan. I love that it didn't exist before, so you both made it happen. That's fantastic. Um, I appreciate you sharing those granular details too about, you know, this kind of the step-by-step -step and what can happen if a patient is shifting, if you need to shift a patient and the drape is simply taped on and the repercussions of that. So I think that's really helpful um, for folks to hear. Yeah. Uh, so another say, question. Oh, oh, go ahead, please. Oh, I was just, I was just going to add not just positioning, but sometimes the, uh, the surgeon or the assistant often lean on the drape and that even, even if you don't reposition the patient, that often mm -hmm. is the cause of the, uh, the drape moving. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for adding that. Great, and so we have another question from the audience um, about how the drape can improve patient satisfaction, something we know is top of mind for all providers right now. Um, and Dr. Tilt, I know we talked a little bit about, you know, the psychological impact of not having to shave the surgical site, um, things like of that nature, but are there other ways um, that this can really drive patient satisfaction that we haven't covered yet? Yeah, great question. I mean, I think we keep uh, hammering home the, the idea of shaving. And I'll add that after watching the video that you just played, um, I would say that the the amount of hair shaved in that simulation is, is a lot. I would say in reality, you can probably get away with wherever your incision is, maybe just a centimeter on either side. I think the video recommended more like an inch, but I think you can get away with even less. I think the drape is that secure and that good. So I would just add that. And that sort of just leads into, you know, more hair on the patient at the end of the, the day is, is usually a happier patient um, and certainly keeping them clean. And, you know, even even after a good hair wash in the OR, there's always going to be little bits of blood if you're not using something as secure as, as the straightaway drape. So um, a, a lot of ways we can benefit patients with this. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Dr. Tilt. Well, I really appreciate both of your perspectives during this Q&A. I mean, to know the masterminds behind this drape is really helpful and to hear the practical examples that you've shared, um, really illuminating for the audience, I think. And I just wanted to give you both the chance if, is there anything else that you wanted to share? Any other thoughts or um, takeaways that maybe we didn't get the chance to cover that you'd like to leave the audience with? I'll just add to Dr. Tan, I know she answered the question of, you know, what, what inspired us to come up with this. And, um, you know, as surgeons, we, we really are in the front lines and a lot of the, you know, drapes on the market and, and medical inventions are kind of um, created by people who aren't necessarily in the operating room. So we have that unique perspective of being in the OR, dealing with these things on a daily basis and kind of knowing what's going to work and what doesn't. And um, we've sort of poured our hearts and souls in, into this. It was probably about five years ago that we started this. And it's been just amazing to see it come to fruition and to actually have it be something that not only we can use, but 
surgeons across the globe. So we're extremely excited for this uh, opportunity to be here. And um, it's kind of inspired us to, to go on from here in terms of coming up with solutions to make things better for both patients and surgeons in the operating room. So thank you. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you both so much again. Really appreciate the time that you took to share your insights on the DRAPE. And um, Dr. Tan, Dr. Tilt, once again, thanks for joining us. Thrilled to have had you here. Thank you so much. We really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you for having us. Oh, of course. And we'd also like to thank Cardinal Health today for sponsoring the webinar. To learn more about the content presented today, please go ahead and check out the resources section on your webinar console and be sure to fill out that post webinar survey that I mentioned at the top of the session. So thank you all again for joining us and I hope that you all have a wonderful afternoon.